Yes, I was sitting there. I was, I was just thinking how amazing it is that something as simple as coming and being here can um, flood me, and I imagine it's similar for other people, with so much well-being. In the past, I think I've come to events or meetings or therapeutic activities because I thought they were good for me, because I thought I needed to be, you know, more sorted, healed, transformed, those sorts of things. So I would go because it was good for me, <laughs> um, useful for my growth. And I don't come to these meetings for that at all. They're just like the taking of short moments practice. They are self-kept. I, I, I sort of, on a Sunday morning, I almost skipped to the meeting <laughs> because I... I, I know that every week I'm going to arrive there, I'm going to be flooded with this, I don't know, love. It's love, isn't it? Put as simply as it can be put. And it's completely guaranteed. And it's the same with all the Balanced View activities. Whatever I participate in, I just feel completely filled up. It's quite extraordinary. And I, I came to this teaching from a different practice. I'd been involved, I'd been, I am um, an Osho Sanyasin, and I had been one for 20 years before I came to this practice. And um, I'm still an Osho Sanyasin, and I actually still love to do the practices of that teaching. And many, <clears throat> probably most of my old friends are also part of that world. And we, we love to dance and we love to meditate. And the funny thing is as well that now when I listen to Osho discourses, almost for the first time in all of those over two decades, I finally glimpse what he's talking about. <laughs> thanks to this teaching and thanks to Candice, it's really Bizarre, I don't know what I was hearing all those years. I was hearing words, but somehow now, if I'm at an event and an Osho discourse is <coughs> put, it's like, oh, right. You know, and I, and just what you were saying about being a peace zone, I think I'm just, it's just so <coughs> deeply inspiring. Um, Candice, the trainers, and the participants who've been in the training for, you know, a while. It's so inspiring what <coughs> one individual can epitomize and um, model for other people around. It's, it's, it's extraordinary when so much of the world and so much of the human population is, is sort of on autopilot or just struggling to keep their heads above water, just tr struggling to stay afloat, then we have these, these people in this teaching, and especially the trainers and, and Candice even more so, who are just like radiant suns in the mass of population, just beacons. And that just moves me. <laughs> Don't touch the mic that just moves me and inspires me so much that in our own corner of the world, our own tiny bit of it, we can do that to whatever degree, you know, presents itself to us to, to take up that challenge. And um, I think most of you know that um, I'm currently treating myself for cancer and uh, I can't, um, I can't describe the um, incredible uh, backbone to that self-care that is offered by this training and this Four Mainstays lifestyle. It's like the, it's sort of like the skeleton, the embodied skeleton of everything that happens in my world. And the way it's transformed that, that experience for me from something which has the potential to be terrifying and <coughs> full of dread, fear, fear of death, panic, overwhelm, 
all that, you know, which is the sort of normal response. That's what I seem to see in the world around cancer. Is um, that it's just delightfully relieved of all the sort of conditioned stories about good and bad. So when it's relieved of that burden of, oh, cancer, bad, bad news, bad news, it actually becomes just completely fascinating. And I am, I'm having the time of my life. <laughs> and it's, so you're not really allowed to say that. It's like, oh, no, cancer, you're supposed to be, look all like deathly and be very full of self-pity and, and victimhood. That's it, a victimhood. You know, and I don't feel that at all. I'm sometimes, I, and I was diagnosed what four months ago or something, and I think, well, if this was denial, it probably would have passed by now. <laughs> it's not denial. <laughs> this is actually m my very real moment-to-moment -moment experience of is, of cancer. Is that it's completely enlivening. I, I, I see everything with this bright availability and openness that's just, I don't know, it's just a power. It's just like a force in me that's uh, open and of benefit. And, and, and I know it's the training that's made the difference that I'm not, I'm just not messing about with everything that I think and feel in the same way. It doesn't have the power to to make me a victim. Yeah, so, um, is there anything else? I can't think of anything else. Yeah, life is really good, really good. <laughs>